It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. Immediately after the election, of course, we have no idea what is the results for the winner. Now, people have projected that Joe Biden is the winner for the election. However, that is not true. We're still waiting for the results as I speak right now, as I'm recording this video. And so, it might take until like December, it might take until January. Honestly, I've never seen something like this ever before. Like I never heard of people like wanting to sleep immediately after counting the ballots. That's like never happened. Like the amount of stuff that's been going on for this freaking election actually worries me. And so I cannot wait to see who's the winner and all that jazz, but like the process, man, it's just so awful. But immediately as they start to predict that Joe Biden is going to be the winner for like the presidency of the United States, I noticed like a series of attacks against free speech, mostly by Democrats, who want to have some sort of restriction on free speech. And I gotta show you guys the examples because oh my god guys, yeah, like I just cannot believe like these people are in power or used to be in power. So let's dig right in. Online hate speech must be taken seriously. I sent a letter to Mark Zuckerberg condemning Facebook role in the ongoing violence in Ethiopia and around the world. Facebook can and must do more to prevent hate speech that is likely to contribute to the murder of civilians. Saying that Facebook has contributed to violence is very bizarre to me. Let's take for example like gun manufacturers. Like I know for a fact that of course like the gun manufacturers they're the ones that built a gun to be used to whatever kind of need that a person wants. However, is it fair for me to say that because somebody used a gun for like a shooting or whatever, that's like the fault of the gun manufacturers or is it the fault of the shooters that actually pulled the trigger? It's the same thing for video games. Like, of course, when you play video games, of course, it does not make a person become violent. No one go out and attack people just because of a video game. And so the person who was likely committing acts of violence were already kind of messed up in the head to begin with. And so how is Facebook trying to make a culture that wants to attack people? They have terms of policies that actually have to be enforced. Now the thing that really actually bothers me about Facebook is probably how people could just stream stuff like murders and stuff. Like I never seen something like that when I was growing up. And so that kind of stuff needed to be stopped. But as far as to blame Facebook directly because of people wanting to say stuff about other people, I'm sorry, it's not their fault that they actually, you know, attack people. I'm sorry, that's not the case. Also, what is your definition of hate speech? Like every single time like these people make these arguments about hate speech is so subjective because what I consider to be hate and what you consider to be hate is actually different. Like it's completely subjective. And so there's no clear cut way to actually know what is hate or what is not hate based upon our subjective opinions. And so it's just that, just opinions. Like people consider the act of blasphemy to be hateful. Like people consider jokes to be hateful too. Like free speech is there, not just to protect the speech that we actually like, but also the stuff that we also do not like too. And so what is this sort of hate speech you're talking about? Because I'm kind of curious what you're referring to. This one deserves some sort of context because it was actually replied to another tweet. A majority of Republican voters, 70% say that the election was unfair according to a political morning console poll. The breathtaking power of a right-wing media that pumps its viewers full of lies, delusion on an industrial scale. And of course, here's the tweet itself. And we still can't manage to do anything to shut down the disinformation machine down? When does the body realize that a cancer is so dangerous that cutting it all together is the only way to survive? America will not survive if we keep allowing Fox News and OAN to function. Now look guys, I am no fan of Fox News or these other kind of organizations like CNN at all. And matter of fact, the way that they actually pump out disinformation is just awful because every single time I see people on the street, it seems as though they're informed by Fox News or CNN or MSNBC and they just lie every single time. 
Like most of the cases when I make the videos that I talk about this kind of stuff, I just try to verify the stuff by the raw footage and not by these networks at all. That said, I do in fact believe that these news organizations are also in their rights to do whatever they want to do. And of course, they're also protected by the First Amendment. Now, the First Amendment talks about like freedom of the press, freedom to assembly, free speech, and freedom to protest. Like, I think it's very clear that if they were to shut down like Fox News or these other organizations, it's actually going to attack this, the First Amendment. And so, this idea is really scary. Really, really scary. Now, of course, the press does not just cover news organizations. Like, the press could be, like, people writing on their iPhone for, like, Twitter. It could be people with their video cameras. And so, the press does not just exclusively just refer to, like, people who are in organizations. That said, I do, in fact, believe they're in their rights to report how they want to report. And to shut them down is just awful. And, of course, of course, this person has, like, the personal pronouns. Like, every single time I find a Twitter profile with the personal pronouns, they have, like, the hottest takes ever. But, uh, let's continue on. Joe Biden transitional official wrote op-ed advocating free speech restrictions. President-elect Joe Biden transitional team leader for U.S.-owned media outlets want to redefine freedom of speech and make hate speech a crime. Richard Single is the Biden transition team lead for the U.S. Agency for Global Media, the U.S. government media empire that includes Voice of America, the Middle East Broadcasting Networks, and Radio Free Europe and Liberty Radio. Single, a Obama administration um, person, wrote last year in a Washington Post uh, op-ed that U.S. freedom of speech was too unfiltered and that changes need to be considered. He wrote, all speech is not equal, and where truth cannot drive out lies, we must add new guardrails. I am for protecting thoughts that we hate, but not speech that incites hate. Single also offered two examples of speech that he has an issue with, Quran burning and circulation of false narratives by Russia during the 2016 election. If Joe Biden really does want to crack down on free speech with his tradition team, I'm sorry, this guy does not deserve any type of power whatsoever. And matter of fact, what he's trying to do, well, besides trying to attack the Second Amendment, is also attack the First Amendment so that people are defenseless. And that is not okay. That is not okay to just go after the First Amendment like that and try to go after people for buying guns online. That is not cool, dude. And I'm surprised, like, there are so many people that want to just support him, but yet, when it comes down to stuff like the military, his potential candidate, like, Dick Cheney, wanted to, like, be part of, like, the military team. When he asked for this sort of stuff, like, the hate speech stuff, when he just tried to do all this awful stuff, like, I listened to my video last time, like, people turn a blind eye just because they just hate Trump. It's just really strange to me. But it goes on because Barack Obama also is against free speech on the internet. Now you have a situation in which large swaths of the country generally believe that the Democratic Party is a front for a pedophile ring. I was talking to a volunteer who was going door to door in Pennsylvania and low income African American communities and was getting questions about conspiracy theories. Is this new malevolent information architecture bending the moral arc away from justice? I think it's the single greatest threat to our democracy. Talking about conspiracy theories is not a greatest threat to our democracy. What is a humongous threat to our democracy is people like you and your colleagues who promote the idea of limitation for speech and trying to crack down on hate speech online. Oh my god, like I cannot believe I actually voted for this man way back when, like during his second term. And this is like the kind of stuff he did. Like this whole entire campaign was thanks to the internet. And here he is trying to shit on the internet that actually helped on his campaign. It's just crazy. But anyway, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comments section down below. And I'll talk to you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend.
Because black friends are rare as you should be aware He smiles like Richard Pryor so just sit and stare It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler